Welcome to Sacred Success Salon, where we are up-leveling and redefining success. We're diving deeply into what it means to own your power, live your purpose, and claim your prosperity. I am your hostess, Anna Kowalska, and today it is my thrilled and honor to have this conversation with Kendra E. Thornberry. Welcome, Kendra. Thank you. Great to be here with you. Yeah, thank you. So I'll just take a minute and share with you guys, our viewers, who Kendra is when, and why we really need to pay attention to what Kendra has to say, especially when it comes to wealth. So Kendra has an MA in behavioral science, is an internationally highly acclaimed coach, spiritual guide and speaker, facilitator, humanitarian, and entrepreneur. She is on the cutting edge of spiritual thought and conscious business practice blazing a new trail and wealth revolution. I love it right there. Kendra helps soul-centered women and evolutionary leaders create spiritual and financial freedom so that they have a greater impact and make more money, all while being true to who they are. She's deeply devoted to reclamation of the feminine as an integral force of change and evolution. Her unconventional business and money approaches lead women to build six and seven figure businesses grounded in purposeful contribution and personal liberation. I just love it. <laughs> Welcome, mm -hmm. Kendra. Thank you again. Yes. yes. So I'll just get us started with the question for which we are here for. What is your definition of success? Mm. My, defin of, uh, my definition of success, what a fun question. Uh, for, for me personally, it's to live on my authentic terms, you know, to really ensure that the expression of myself and my life and my purpose is really congruent with my essential self and, uh, and my core values. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. And, and to... So there's that personal, I think you said it in the, the bio, you know, it's my personal liberation mm -hmm. and, and it's also about my, my contribution to the collective and, and for me to really know that I've done my part to help with the healing and the wholeness and the, uh, the wellness of our planet. Wow. Oh, I love it. And I love the part that you bring up that it's about your personal um, fulfillment and mm -hmm. it is about contribution both parts what components have to have to be in in the definition of it it's beautiful yes. yeah and they're interrelated mm. tell us more about that well uh for me my my soul my world view uh for i i can't well i've tried uh i can and it's it's too much of a struggle when i separate those two things so it, 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 it goes both ways. Uh, in order to create global change, it starts with me. It starts with my personal satisfaction, my, my personal uh, self-liberation, uh, my personal responsibility and accountability to design a life that is consistent with my best self. And so when I'm my best self, when I'm my, in my excellence and in my integrity and in my awesomeness, I have the most to give as far as contributing to the greater good um and then vice versa I, there's something about the the design of my soul that i don't feel satisfied if i'm not uh, if my 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 direction my focus is not connected with knowing that i'm doing something for the greater good so it goes both ways yeah oh that makes sense Absolutely. That's so beautiful. And it's it just, it, it's such a beautiful example of the conversation that we are having, being your best self, doing what it is that you are here to do for yourself, but also making sure that you are part of, part of the wholeness, right? Mm -hmm. Doing your part. Yeah. The contribution. Beautiful. And that brings me to the piece of money. I mean, <laughs> you are all about wealth and prosperity <laughs> and doing it in a way that's uh, just I'm going to use word magical, hmm. <laughs> but I know it's no magic. I know that you are attuned to a very special frequency of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. 
Well, you know, for my own journey, what I, what I discovered as I set forth on creating a, a business lifestyle model that, that really felt congruent with my values and my aspirations to, to give well in this life, uh, I realized that I, I can't avoid the money equation. And I had attempted to do that. And I, I run into a lot of other women in particular who are creatives and uh, visionaries and healers and so forth. And, you know, we were exposed to and are exposed to a money game that can feel very, um, uh, very much in violation of our core values. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I wanted to like push it away. I'm like, no, I'm not playing the money game. You know, I don't want any part of that. It's part of our, our bigger problems. Um, and, and yet, Ooh, you know, I couldn't pay my bills on time, <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, I, I definitely have a rebellious part of my, my design and that's what helps me be a, a great entrepreneur and do my work well in a lot of regards but but money is a vehicle and uh, it is something that we can harness we can come into conscious relationship with and and learn to create a partnership with uh, for our purpose and prosperity. So, you know, really from having what I would call a dark night of the soul with money, where I was faced with my, uh, my feelings and my beliefs and my limitations uh, around it and, and really the scarcity and the lack that was manifesting, mm -hmm. uh, I realized that I needed to do, I wanted to do some serious healing and reinventing on what money could mean for me and then other change agents who really care uh, because there isn't any place in our life that money doesn't touch. Right. And really, if we are serious about creating change on this planet, which I know we are, mm -hmm. we, we, we need to become more savvy and masterful at being uh, distributors of wealth uh, that really helps rather than hinders, you know, all of our, our people and, and mother earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's been quite a journey. <laughs> I love one of the terms that you've used recently that I heard you use was, um, becoming a steward of money. Mm. Yeah. That, that gave me a, a new perspective on, on money has been part of my conversation for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And Growing up where I did, it, it, I have a certain meaning. I had a certain idea of money. And then I, just like you, I tried to push it away, right? And I know a lot of women who are watching us, um, beautiful souls, creative, mm -hmm. gifted, intuitive. Like, no, money is the evil, right? <laughs> and and even, even if they embrace accepting that it's not, there is still part that is just not giving into, I, I can be paid for who I am, which is something mm. I want to ask you about, right? And having that definition of being a steward of money gave me personally access to looking at money differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me, because so, now I presented two questions right there. <laughs> Let's go back to getting paid for who you are. Because that to me was just, it baffled my mind years ago. Mm. I still don't know if I'm exactly there, but I love the idea. <laughs> Yes. Well, at the beginning of this, this, uh, this conversation, this exchange, you asked me my definition of success. And for me, you know, being in integrity with, with who I am, my essential authentic self is primary to my fulfillment, my satisfaction and my success. So for me, there was this, this mismatch and incongruence in my relationship with, with money because I, I didn't believe and I hadn't seen models at, at that time where I could be all of who I am and get paid for it. Um, most, most people, unfortunately, and it doesn't have to be this way, mm -hmm. but most people buy into the paradigm, the set of beliefs that says that, you know, in order to get a paycheck, in order to have an income, a livelihood, I have to compromise who I am. I have to hold back my truth. I have to maneuver or contort myself into a certain way of being and, and deny uh, what matters to me, uh, deny my, you know, my unique expression. And I just don't want any part of that. And I'm not any part of it. I decided some time ago to, you know, to ditch that paradigm and say, you know what, there's more 
Uh, I, I believe and operate as such that this is a, a kind and benevolent universe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been studying the universal law for many years and, and I've come to know really that there are factors and there are uh, ways of which things are orchestrated for our good. And it includes that we were designed a certain way. We, we were designed with our own blueprint and our, our own beauty and, and quirkiness and, mm -hmm. and attributes that make us who we are. And so why on earth would really in the universe construct the uniqueness and the divinity of who we are and yet not set it up so that we could actually be supplied with the resources needed and necessary for our well-being and for our purposes to thrive. It's really, if you break it down, it's just, it's, it's crazy. Um, so I really immerse myself in the belief and the study and the certainty, the knowingness within myself that I can get paid for who I am. Mm -hmm. And when I started my business, that was one of my mantras that I repeated over and over and over again, because initially I didn't fully believe it. You know, I wanted it to be true. And yet part of me honestly was scared that, you know, it was going to be proven to me that that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, there's so much that we could say about this. I just want that. I feel so passionate for each of us to understand that none of us is an exception to that truth mm -hmm. that we truly can. And, and my experience is that, that the more I've brought myself forward in my leadership, in my coaching, in my marketing, each time I take that next risk or I'm more vulnerable or I expose more of who I am, my audience, my community, they, they lean in because our people, our communities want who we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's really a beautiful thing. And I'm like, wow, it's so true. And the more I'm me, the more I prosper. Wow. So what do you think? I'm glad you said, and you are so passionate about it, like the energy mm -hmm. of, of, your, <laughs> of your confidence in it and, and, and the truth. Like it's truth. Mm -hmm. like there's no other way. What do you think then, um, like backing up a little bit, even in your own experience, mm -hmm. why would we... Where did it come from that we that we have to hold parts of ourselves back? Like, where did we get this belief or mm -hmm. concept that we have to hold some of our some or all of us back in order to have money? Mm hmm. Whoo, that's a big question. You know, I think that there are a variety of influences that have con conditioned us to believe this to be so. Mm -hmm. um, and without getting too meta or you know social or or what have you, I I, just, I think if you were to, you know, in simplest ways with the time that we have, I, I think that there are cultural uh, mass beliefs uh, that, that, that I'm going to use this word, you know, and, and anything I say, you can take it or leave it, of course, try it on for yourself to see what resonates for you. But, you know, I, I, I believe that we are trained to uh, be uh, mediocre. We're trained to be compliant. We're mm -hmm. trained to, to just accept just enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, as women in particular, since that's you know the particular form I'm in and, and, and who I work with, I've come to know the uniqueness of the journey of women. Um, you know, there's, there's even a way that, that we get to become dependent and docile, if you will, uh, because we, we need other forces or people or men or institutions or systems to, uh, to help us feel like we're okay in the world. Mm -hmm. And so one of the reasons why I'm really passionate about money and the new paradigm of wealth is it really comes down to uh, our liberation and, and our sovereignty. Uh, so did I answer your question? <laughs> yes, you actually did. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes. And I'm, and I'm reading in between the lines, um, and tell me if, if this, if this resonates with you, but I almost feel very often, and this was my experience and probably is to a degree still where I feel like I am using money to restrict myself at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, one of the things that's happened with our money system, our money game is that. We've, we've come to rely on it and depend on it as such a, a vital 
force. And so it dictates many areas of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that we are in a transition right now on this planet from what I say would be survival consciousness to thrival consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so for a lot of us, we still are in the grips of survival consciousness in relationship to money and wealth. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's, it's, it's very real you know, to, to grapple with the uh, various ways that money keeps a hold on us. You know, it, it, it's, it's food on the table, it's shelter over our heads. So it really gets us at a very, you know, primal level, uh, which is part of why people feel suffocated and, uh, you know, remain in soul sucking jobs and, you know, all of these, these factors. And we really have bought into this notion, well, I need this paycheck. I, you know, I, I need to, to, you know, take clients that aren't really the right match or whatever these are, because they just, you know, I need to make sure I get the money. So, you know, I'm really here to help unwind and unwire that, that story and uh, equip, you know, women to, lead from the knowingness that that uh, th those are really not truths um, mm -hmm. we just think they are because we've believed them you know right um, mm -hmm. beliefs are not truths yes we had a conversation uh, with another expert about beliefs and and diving deeply into where they even come from so yeah you're yeah you're absolutely right they're mm -hmm. beliefs it's just mm -hmm. something we took on so let's say somebody is ready to take on like one of our viewers is like okay i i believe you <laughs> and it resonates with me yet i'm still living in this paradigm where money controls me and i still don't know how it's going to come and this could i mean i had these conversations not just with people with women who are in in a mm. in workforce having a job but women who are in soul sucking businesses yeah right yeah so what would you say and i know it's a much bigger conversation but like a first step somebody could take mm -hmm. to start embracing and really not just knowing the concept, but really being the concept of, mm -hmm. I get paid for who I am. Money is my partner, co-creator. Yes. Well, I think even what you just modeled right there, Anna, about, uh, you know, money is my partner, uh, you know, what you just declared. Um, you have to understand everyone that you have the power and so really the first step before any kind of tactic or strategy is to make the decision to own your power. Uh, because the idea that money has control is, is a, a demonstration of your forgetting. And what I mean by that is the forgetting of the, the power that you have within yourself to influence, to co-create, to craft, to to manifest realities in accordance to your own uh, choices. So, you know, that like before you, again, before you use any system or strategy, you know, you really got to come into this place where you decide that. And, and here's part of the key. It's like, you don't have to fully believe it yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes that's what holds us back. Well, I don't really believe that. Or, you know, using that declaration, money is my, my uh, partner in my purpose and prosperity. Like maybe that's what you want to say. Yeah. And then you can have a part of you that says, well, I don't totally believe that. Or I don't, you know, that, and I'm kind of skeptical that that could really work for me or whatever. Uh, you know, you make the decision first. You make the decision. And then for me, because I know you asked for what one step, but I, you know, I just want to go a, a, a little That's further with this, mm -hmm. is, is to, to tell yourself what it is that you want to believe. Mm -hmm. And again, this is, people underestimate uh, the potency of, of doing this kind of work. Uh, to just understand that whatever you've told yourself has got you to where you are now, right? It's the repetition of a set of beliefs that have resulted in what you're experiencing. And, and likewise, you can, as a deliberate conscious creator, change your script. You can change the, what you're telling yourself and through time over and over again, you, it, it will 
become a part of, of who you are. Like for me, when I said I started my business and my mantra was I get paid for who I am. Some days I believe that more than others. Some days I was like, yeah, whatever, you know? And some <laughs> days I'm like, yeah, I feel it. You know, I'm a hundred percent in. And then of course, variations in yeah. there. But one day, one day I woke up and, and I, and I felt it like in my blood, in my bones, there wasn't, there wasn't any wavering anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and that came through time. It came through the decision to, to, to own that. And then it, it came through the devotion of the consistency with it. Yeah. Does that oh, make absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, and devotion, consistency, such key, mm -hmm. such key, two key words, devotion, consistency. So even if it doesn't work, um, for a month or two or a year, like just believe that it is because you decide it, right? Absolutely. And I'm so glad that you, you broke down that timeline, you know, a, a, a week, a month, a year, what have you, you know, a, a, this is particularly true of the American culture. Uh, a, a, you know, we have such short attention spans and, uh, you know, we want the fix and we want it now. And uh, unfortunately, part of what that means is that you know, we don't, we don't get the results that we want. Um, you know, we want the band-aid, we want the bright, shiny object. We want, you know, just, just get, you know, give me that, whatever that just fills the hole as fast as possible. Yep. And, and really, you know, those who live an extraordinary life, those who have the longevity of well-being and, and wealth, it, it is the habits that, that we, repeat over and over and over without an obsession or a desire to prove ourselves wrong by saying, see, it's not, it's not working. It's not happening yet. Um, and you know, for me, success requires uh, a, a different kind of, of patience than our culture encourages. <laughs> mm, that, that was pretty key right there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Patience. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why in this particular time right now, the elements, and I know your connection with elements is so very mm -hmm. powerful, but as I was saying, uh, as you were saying this and I, and I was, and a question popped in, how do you use nature and elements in, mm -hmm. in relation to patients? That's just what wants to be asked. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, uh, what a great question. How do you use nature and the elements in relationship to patients? Well, what, what comes to me to answer that is to, to connect that patience is uh, one of the qualities and attributes of the divine feminine. Mm. And in order for us to be in what I would call a, a, a healthy, whole and abundant relationship with money and to have an experience, a consistent experience of wealth, we need to have our feminine essence be uh, a part of our toolbox. And for a lot of us, we have denied and oppressed our feminine uh, qualities. So that feels important uh, given the work that I do and that yeah. the, the feminine is, is, is part of you know, how I'm helping women create uh, new models of success in these changing times. So nature, uh, nature and the feminine are very connected. Um, you know, there are seasons uh, that, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking out my windows right now and I'm just like, oh, look at the trees and the sun is out and, you know, the new blooms are coming forth from the, this late spring that we're in. Um, there's such wisdom in nature. And, and for, for the feminine, you know, we feel our, our rhythm and our connection is, is very it, tied to, to nature and in cycles, you know, we're cyclical beings. Mm -hmm. um, and so... If, if we uh, are impatient uh, during nature's cycles and we're not uh, allowing of or surrendering to the, the heightened and deeper wisdom contained within cycles, then, then we are, what I would say, imposing um, our ego's will um, over um, the, the, natural, uh, the natural wisdom of life. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. You know, so part of this new relationship with money and wealth is, is oh, expanding our understanding of, of how nature is an incredible bounty before us and 
and around us at all times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's so beautiful. So let me ask you a question about this. Yeah. Um, when I was first starting to get into abundance and idea where we, that we can just manifest and it's all there around for us, um, not necessarily without work, but we can tap into it. One mm-hmm. of the exercises um, that I was given was, well, look, you know, trees have all, like there is abundance of leaves on, on a trees, right? They don't have to really do anything. They have to do what they came here to do and they have all the resources mm-hmm. to give them the leaves that they need to have, right? Yes. <laughs> and that yeah. was one of my understandings of like, tap into the nature and it's already doing what it needs to do and you are the same kind of a being, mm-hmm. right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, what a great example. Um, and, and you know from some of the work that, you know, our, our journey uh, that, you know, one of the bodies of work that I do is, is embodied wealth. And, and we talk, mm-hmm. uh, you know, my mentor of 20 plus years and now uh, co-creator in this, this work that we're doing, um, that we, that, whew, yeah, we immerse really in exactly what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the, the consciousness, the seed of any creation has within it um, the blueprint, if you will, uh, and the design to flourish. Uh, life knows how to live. Uh, given the example of the tree that you, you just uh, mm-hmm. shared or, you know, a flower or what have you, you know, and they don't have to effort or push their way to creating buds and leaves and, you know, beautiful, uh, sensual, um, vital flowers that, that smell good. Like, you know, they're not like thinking about it, you know, they're not like, you know, what do I need to do today? I really, I can't figure out how to manifest my scent. You know? like, Wouldn't it be funny? <laughs> I'm not smelling today. <laughs> It's kind of, it is, it's laughable, but really that, that's part of what we've forgotten, you know, as humans, that we have that same innate intelligence inside of us that we can lean into and trust. Yep. Oh, I love that. And it goes back to, it goes back to the power, knowing that you have the power, trusting that the purpose, which is the seed that of, of which you are, and then knowing that prosperity is just part of what happens when you mm-hmm. own your power beyond purpose and you can claim your prosperity, right? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that is so powerful. So let me ask you, um, we, ha- we have a little bit of uh, just a few more minutes, and I want to make sure that I ask you. Yeah. How big do you see, like, there is this question about bigness, about money. Mm-hmm. And like, for you personally, even, like, what is your vision for, for how the money plays out mm-hmm. um, as right now, essential tool in our universe, right? What is your vision for that? And your own personal journey with how big do you see it? Mm, Yes. Ooh, that's a fun question. Thank you. Uh, Well, my vision for money is that it become once again, a, uh, an exchange that truly honors the value and the gifting that each person brings as part of a whole. Uh, because that, you know that's part of how the, the, the transaction of money came to be. You know, you know, you have milk and and I have lettuce, or you know whatever it is, and you know to really honor that uh, on some level we need each other, right? Mm-hmm. And and you know we've we've created this system that's very divisive, that's very uh, combative, that's like you know we we have to to fight for our piece of the pie. And I I truly believe and know that money can be an exchange that 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 honors the beauty that each of us bring, and that reinforces generosity, mm-hmm. and that there really is enough for everyone. Um, so, so my vision is quite grand. I mean, I believe that our, our imperative, you know, for those of us that are here, that are tuning in, that felt called to this, that feels the re- feel the resonance, that we are part of a movement. We are part of, of creating, co-creating a new paradigm in which there is no reality uh, that people live without. Uh, so uh, for me, you know, one of my greater missions is to help eradicate poverty on this planet. Uh, you know, there should be no ch- children who are starving, yeah. you know, there, I mean, we could go on and on with the plight and the suffering. And so, 
you know, initially I, I had some misgivings about, again, my personal relationship with money and putting my focus on money. I mean, I was like, oh no, people are going to think I'm so shallow because I'm talking about money. But, you know, when a purpose lives you, you know, you got to pay Ooh. attention because yeah. then it gets, it gets really hard. Um, mm -hmm. So my vision is that money become the sacred ally that it can be and that it wants to be. Uh, and that we all really know um, a, a good life that, that feels good to us, you know? Oh, I just felt that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is very moving that mm. we are all have, we all have access to living a good life. Yeah. And money in the structure we live in right now is necessary. I had a conversation with a woman not so long ago, and I respect what she's doing, but creating um, here in, in not so far from where I live, creating a, a village where money is it doesn't exist yes and it's exchange system and we yet and and i think it's beautiful and and i i'm going to have a conversation with her about it mm -hmm. but i feel like it's still limited because it's only limited to this to this particular um unit of of people mm -hmm. right like they they can't they can't um if they don't make a particular style shoe mm -hmm. <laughs> nobody mm -hmm. can wear that shoe yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, that's a great example or illustration. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's to become of our money system, you know, five years, 10 years plus down the road. I mean, certainly there are some new currencies that have been introduced to our economy with, you know, cryptocurrencies, for instance. Yep. Um, and, and I do believe that the face and the form of money will, will, it's inevitably, inevitably going to change. Mm -hmm. So, maybe there won't be money in the future. Uh, but part of why I'm called to the work that I'm doing in particular with women is that because money is so tied to our value and it's really imperative that we uh, heal and come into again, our sovereignty and our empowerment with, with money. And I'm putting quotes around right. it because it's really about owning our value and our influence. Oh, right there mic drop <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> absolutely yes oh i love it and that's when money become yep go ahead yeah. yeah well and and then also we can be we can be a part of shaping whatever the new money system is because you know if we're not playing if we're not if we're not at the table feeling our influence and knowing that we're making our best contribution um then we can still feel like we have a uh, you know we're we're a bit helpless or a bit powerless or feel like there's still something that we can't enter into and mm -hmm. so that's what's important is that we need those of us that are heart centered that are principle centered to be at the table helping to shape you know what it's going to be yeah. Yes. Oh, that is, that is, it's, it's a very sacred responsibility that I am absolutely, yeah, I'm absolutely honored to be a part of and which is why we're having this conversation. So the women who are, like you said, who are the leaders and are intuitive and are gifted and are creative <laughs> can be at the table. Yes. And, can be, yeah. are, and will be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I yes, love that. Yes. Oh. And, you know, that goes, that circles back to what you're, uh, you know, use the phrase at the beginning, because you'd said there were the two pieces and one is being a steward of money. So way to come full circle with that yes. is what you just said about it being a sacred responsibility. To me, that is another way of saying, you know, this is a resource and I am a steward of it and I'm going to use it well. And uh, I'll, I know we're probably just at time here. There's so much to cover, but um, in terms of shifting from survival to thrival, part of that, and this is where we got to get truthful with ourselves around money, mm -hmm. I needed to with myself, is to recognize that taking responsibility uh, is, it, it, it means we got to show up in different ways. And we can't use money as an excuse to not show up. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's, that, that is, yes. <laughs> That is what I was trying to get across before where I, I'm keeping, I'm using, I know for myself, but I also see yes. other women, right? I'm using money to keep myself mm -hmm. small or I see women do it all the time, use money to keep themselves small. And it is a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why, I think that's why so many of us are scared to be bigger, yeah. to be more of who we are, right? Show up more of who we are because it is a responsibility. Mm-hmm. 
yeah well yep. said <laughs> Wow. Oh, Kendra, I, I could talk for hours with you. I know. <laughs> it is so exciting. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. And I know you have a gift for our viewers right mm -hmm. below this video. There is a button. You guys go and click. Don't, don't go yet. <laughs> could you share with us what the gift is that you are? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, uh, yeah thanks. My pleasure to be here and to, to share this time with you and, and all you listeners and viewers. Uh, the gift that I have for you is three keys to making money being you. How's about that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, again, not needing or uh, having to compromise your values or the truth or the uh, the authenticity in this this money game. So, you know, this this is an ebook, and it was born of my own trials and tribulations and lots of tears. Uh, and uh, yeah. So I go into those three keys and, you know, really get into some more of the paradigm shifts that are necessary to, to enter into a different relationship with money and, and in turn have greater ease with it, make more of it, mm -hmm. um, feel like, uh, you know, you can set aside your concerns about money and really focus on the purpose that you're here for. Oh, that is right there. A whole branch of a tree. <laughs> <laughs> It really is, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much, Kendra. So you guys make sure you download the, um, the gift right after we finish our interview. It's the button right below. And Kendra, for all of our viewers who want to find you, they download the gift. How else can they find you? Well, you can go to my website uh, if you would like to. And uh, so that, you know, Kendra Thornbury, Kendra E. Thornbury dot com. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, I mean, when, when they download, when you download uh, the ebook, you'll, you'll know how to find me. There'll yes. be information there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, beautiful, amazing. Oh, thank you so, so very much. This is such yes. it's an important part of the conversation. And I cannot imagine having it with anybody other than you because you are just such an example of embodiment of wealth. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. So before we part our ways and say our final goodbyes, I have a two part question. Oh, that's right. Uh, yes. And my question is, what would you like to say to yourself five years ago? So you now say mm -hmm. to yourself five years ago. Okay. So what would I say to myself that I was five years ago? Yeah. What so right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. What would I say to myself five years ago? Okay. So honey, there's a, a, some big awakening happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, you really are on the cutting edge and you're going to be asked to, uh, to really face parts of yourself that have been holding you back and it's going to get kind of crunchy. It's going to get a little bit dark and scary mm -hmm. and you're going to become more of who your soul intended you to be through it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to know more clearly what your medicine is and you are okay uh, know, it's quite a ride <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that was beautiful and, and <laughs> that was I'll, fun I'll, thanks yeah all right you ready for part two? Ooh, there's okay <laughs> yes <laughs> what would you like to hear right now from your future self yourself five years from now whisper something to you right now mm. what would it be you're so loved and you're right on track Oh, <laughs> amazing. I love it. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. Thank yeah. you for playing, yeah. for sharing. <laughs> it was such a pleasure, Kendra. And you guys, make sure you download the gift from Kendra. Follow her. Get into her world. Get into the world of wealth. Mm -hmm. Getting paid for who you are because it's so important. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. And we'll see you at the next conversation. Bye for now.